Take a little trip with me, I'm gonna take you home. Take a little history. Take a little, take a little. Down this lane of memory. So let's raise another glass for the glorious past and the friends we have become. Yeah, yeah. Cause little did we know that good times come and go, but the best is yet to come. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. It's reported that the Army is considering inducting 100 officers and 1,000 soldiers on a limited three-year tour of duty. This would be the Army's response to the incredible financial crunch the corona crisis has created in the country and the need to cut the Army's budget. The Army believes that this particular tour of duty will make considerable savings in terms of pay and in terms of pension. But the key question is, is this the wrong response? to a very real problem. With me to answer that question is the former Deputy Chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Raj Kadyan. Lieutenant General Kadyan, before I go into the pros and cons of this scheme to induct a hundred officers and a thousand Jawans on a very limited three-year tour of duty, let me ask you, where do you think this scheme originated? With the Army, with politicians, or with bureaucrats? Karan, at the moment, we are going by the media reports. I have no details available whether it is the brainchild of the Chief of Defence Staff or Chief of Army Staff. I have not spoken to either of the two. But uh, coming to the crunch point that the scheme has practically no takeaway for the Army, I would be surprised if an Army General recommended. It is more likely the brainchild of a politician or a bureaucrat. General Kadem, let's then come to the scheme itself. First, it said that it will significantly save the amount of money the army spends on pay and pension. According to the Hindu, who clearly have got these details from the army itself, the saving could be just in excess of 11,500 crore. Now, at a time when the country's resources are totally squeezed because of the corona crisis and the army has to reduce its budget, isn't this a very sensible way of doing it? Current uh, Hindu must have done uh, their research and I cannot dispute their figure. But there are two basic flaws in the figures quoted by them. Firstly, they are only quoting a cumulative figure of 6.83 crore for the SS officers and 85 lakhs for the tour of, of duty officer. I think that is not the correct way to work out. Better way is to work out the annual cost. That comes to about 48 some lakhs for the SS officer and 28 something for the TOD officer. The second factor that we need to remember that the SS officer in his 14 years gives the best years of his life and a very dedicated service. He has the carrot of the permanent commission hanging in front. TOD officer has no such incentive. Therefore, the return from the money spent will be much higher for the SS officer than for the TOD officer. You're making two points there. First of all, the basis on which the Hindu was told the savings could be worked out is the wrong one. If you do it on an annual basis, it actually is a much smaller saving. And the second reason suggests why this smaller saving is not worth making, because you're saying the attitude and commitment of the two different officers, the short service commission who serves for 10 or 14 years and this tour of duty who serves only for three will be very different. And given that their attitude will be different, it doesn't justify the much smaller level of actual savings achieved. But let me broaden the perspective at this point. The truth is, as things stand, 60% of the army's budget today is spent on pay and pension. Over the last five years, whilst the army's budget has increased by 68%, salaries have increased by 75%, pensions have increased by an astonishing 146%. So clearly, Radical measures are necessary. Isn't this the sort of radical measure that is worth seriously considering? Karan, firstly, let's examine why are the pensions increasing. The pay and pensions are separate. The pension has no standalone status. It is directly derived from the pay. And pays are fixed 
based on the cost of living they keep rising with every pay commission the pension is half of the pay if the pension is increasing because the pay increases if the government wants to reduce the pension they have to reduce the pay i don't think the government will take that political risk the second reason for increase in pension is also the uh, people are living longer the, the the expectancy which was 31 years at independence is now 68.7 years so let me say this you're giving me two reasons which explain why pensions are increasing phenomenally one they are linked to pay and as pay goes up and pay has to go up because the cost of living pension will go up as well and secondly as you say people live longer and when people live longer the amount you pay in pension goes up is this also mirrored in the civil services is the same thing happening there is their pension also increasing disproportionately largely absolutely karan the pension rules are standard for all employees it is 50% of the last salary drawn even in the defense budget pension that we are talking about it is not only the military pensioners who uh, take the pension out of that kitty even the civil defense employees the numbers may be smaller but the per capita annual pension take home is much larger than the military pension so you are saying that in fact the disproportionate increase in pension is happening both for civilian civil servants as well as for the military and you can't simply pick the military and make the pension element of the military a problem but let me put you a second reason why the army believes this tour of duty would be beneficial for the country the first are the reasons to do with cutting the pay and pension budget of the army you're disagreeing with those the second is to do with the impact these tour of duty officers will have on the national workforce once they leave the army after 3 years and enter the civilian side and the army's own proposal says and i'm quoting the nation and the corporates are likely to benefit from trained disciplined confident diligent and committed men and women who have completed the tour of duty and yesterday anand mahendra said that his group would welcome such officers after they'd finished three years they would be invaluable and therefore very welcome to join industry karan i am not at all surprised uh, from anand mahendra statement the corporate sector is a clear gainer in this key in fact they get trained disciplined diligent committed entrants at no cost the cost is zero the second factor about the uh, improvement in the national workforce i don't know whether 100 officers in the overall concept will make a difference but if that is the government policy i am with it if they think that the army training will improve the quality of workforce then let it be but uh, the third institution army we will discuss maybe later it doesn't gain anything the corporate world will gain if i can make a suggestion at this rate if you permit me if they want these good committed disciplined officers the the, the bedrock or the founding institution to impart these values is the national defense academy at the end of the 3 years let them do a campus interview on certain well, selected let's not, numbers let's not let's not get lost in that that okay. is a bit of a polemical suggestion but what you are saying clearly is that there's no doubt the tour of duty officers will be a gain for the corporate world when they join the corporate world but it's that gain is happening at the cost of the army and that is what you have a problem with I'll come to the cost of the army in a moment's time because that is in fact the central core of your critique. But let me first point out something else. This particular three-year tour of duty would also be hugely beneficial for the young men who take it up. It said that not only will they get salaries in the army that will be better than what they would have got at that age in the corporate world, but secondly, those salaries will be tax-free, and thirdly, when those three years of service end. they will leave with a lump sum which could be as much as 5 or 6 lakh for the officers and 2 or 3 lakh for jawans now with that sort of financial remuneration this team could draw some of the best talent in the country that would be a gain for the army surely yes that would be a gain as far as the officers are concerned but i don't know whether 1000 jawans will be taken in by the corporate sector there is no talk about it because their education background is only school certificate the the second part is that these youngsters certainly will gain 
but somebody has to pay for that gain and that at the moment in the scheme as it is published in the media uh, is paid by the army or the defense budget which we are trying to reduce so okay. once, again, is, uh, once again we are coming back to that question it may be a gain for the corporate world it may even be a gain for the young men who join as officers or jawans for three years but that gain is happening at the cost of the army let's then take a break when i come back i want to take up your critique which is really centered on the cost to the army of this plan you mentioned it in an article you wrote for the wire on sunday i want to now after the break discuss your critique with you but first a message from our sponsor blend live it take a little trip with me i'm going to take you home take a little history take a little Down this lane of memory So let's raise another glass for the glorious past and the friends we have become Yeah yeah cuz little do we know the good times come and go but the best is yet to come Welcome back to a special interview for the wire my guest is India's former deputy chief of army staff Lieutenant General Raj Kadyan General Kadyan let's now come to your critique of this three year tour of duty that the army is considering as a way of inducting 100 officers in a thousand jawans you're sharply critical of it as was made clear in the article you wrote for the wire yesterday sunday first of all you say an officer who's commissioned for three years will only receive about six months of pre commission training which is a lot less than a normal officer would receive and secondly after being commissioned the tour of duty officer probably won't receive any further post commission training whereas normal officers would get quite a lot of post commission training as well therefore you come to the conclusion that these tour of duty officers are likely to end up as semi trained leaders yes karan firstly the duration of their training nothing is specified but my uh, observation is based on a logical inference the ex nd officers get a total of 3 and a half years training the direct ima entry gets 18 months the short service get 11 months so obviously since they have only 3 years training you know, they will get not more than 3 to 6 months that's my inference secondly you know we must understand that to which arm service or corps an officer will join gets known only on the date of commission therefore let us say an officer going to a tank corps may not have seen a tank as a cadet so when he lands up in the unit he is absolutely raw every corps and regiment runs a 6 months young officers course to give him the orientation of that particular corps or regiment in during the 6 months he is not available to the unit he goes to a training institution when he comes back he starts hands on training but this is a training only on the job i don't think 3 years period is long enough for him to get the uh, these vios course which i don't know whether he will be have to he will have to go through second he has to prove himself as a leader uh, he has to rub shoulders with the men and convince the men that is superior to them uh, professionally intellectually with his background and limited training i think he will remain semi trained and will not enjoy the confidence of the man where the man can risk his life on his order let me pick up on that second point the first point is as you said the training will be a lot less than that of a normal officer both at the pre commission stage and the post commission stage simply because if you're only in the army for 3 years you can't spend that much time training but your second point was an inference from the first that because this tour of duty officers training will not be the equivalent of normal officers the jawans will not regard him with the same faith and the same confidence why why would jawans make this difference because they will not have the required confidence in his professional ability if he is considered semi trained let me allow me to quote an example he will be like the nominated members of our parliament they are experts they are very highly talented in different field but nobody expects them to contribute to the serious national issues the the toddy officers will be exactly the same they will get the respect because of their rank 
but the loyalty that must come with it and the confidence that must come with it of the subordinate is not likely to come in a large majority. There will be exceptions, of course. So basically, the Jawans will make a real distinction between normal officers and tour of duty officers. And they will not regard tour of duty officers with the same respect and therefore they won't have the same loyalty and commitment to them. Is that right? Absolutely. That's a fact of life. I mean, it doesn't require any magical solution. Hmm. Now, you have a third concern as well. And that is to do with the attitude of these tour of duty officers. You say in the article you wrote for The Wire that they are likely to consider themselves in transit. In other words, from the word go, they will know that in three years they are leaving the army and they will be looking ahead to ask themselves, what do I do in three years' time? And to that extent, their mind and their attention will be diverted from the military role they are supposed to be playing. Absolutely, Karan, it's a normal human nature. They will be our children. I have nothing against them personally. But unless you have a carrot hanging in front of you, your incentive goes down. It's a fact of life. Whether a regular officer or it is a short service officer, they have promotion to look forward to. They have a permanent commission to look forward to as far as the SS officer are concerned. What does this man look forward to? He doesn't get promotion. So he will be a time marker. I mean, he will use this period. His eyes will remain on the calendar. His mind will remain locked on uh, to the exit because he knows he is going to go in the same rank and his mind remains on the corporate world. So his contribution to the army will be psychologically also even less apart from the physical lack of uh, professional knowledge. Even psychologically, his sense of commitment cannot match the other officers. And as a result of these three points, you conclude in your article for The Wire, and I'm quoting you, the army will end up being the loser and it will have its professional capabilities eroded. In other words, the army may end up saving money in terms of pay and pension by taking on people on a tour of duty, but as a fighting force, its professional capabilities will be eroded and the army will be the loser. Karan, I'm, uh, I'm confirmed in this view that a commanding officer who gets this duty officer might use him as a mess secretary or as a sports officer or as a military training transport officer. But I don't think any commanding officer is going to send him out in the anti-militancy -milita operation and risk the lives of the men. That is a fact of life. You see, if you look at it overall, it is the army will nurture the tree and the corporate will pluck the fruit. That is the sum total of it. In, and in fact, that is another concern that you mentioned in your article for The Wire. You mentioned it in part one of our interview, but I want to quote from what you said to The Wire. You said the army will willy-nilly become a supplier of recruits for the private sector. The corporate world will gain. The army will become a recruiting ground for disciplined people who spend three years in the army and then actually their benefit transfers to the corporate sector. That is not doing the army any good. The army is not meant to be a recruiting ground for good corporate sector managers. Yes, Karan, army is a professional institution involved in a very difficult task of managing national security. To use them as a feeder institution to the corporate world, I think, is a, is a very, very uh, wrong start and a very wrong thought. The government needs to have a relook at it and consider it seriously. Don't use the army as a stepping stone for the individuals to join the corporate world. There's one other point that politicians would tend to make when they talk about this three-year tour of duty. They say it will build up patriotic zeal, it will build up national spirit. It is something that India can benefit from as a country. Do you believe that using the army to build up nationwide patriotic zeal is a bad idea? Uh, are you referring to, sorry, you're not clear, short service officers? Yes, I'm talking about no. tour of duty okay. officers. Of Army, Army started the short service commissioned officers to expand the base so that the frustration of getting less promotion is reduced. Unfortunately, the scheme hasn't proved attractive mainly because of the age factor. When he goes home after 14 years, he is in his mid-30s and the chance for him to start a second career is very, very low. Therefore, if you reduce it to five years, he will be out of the army in around 25, 27 years. He still has a very good chance. 
the scheme will be more attractive. Government should consider reducing from 14 to 5 years. So you are saying a better way of reducing the army's budgetary liability in terms of pay and pension and still ensuring that a person is attractive enough to come and serve as an officer or a jawan is to amend the existing short service commission, reduce its present tenure from 10 and 14 years to 5, so that when someone leaves the army after 5 years, he's still young enough to be able to get a second job. If you leave the army after 10 or 14 years, you're probably too old, no one will take you, and you get lost in the middle. You're therefore saying, don't go down the three-year tour of duty. That is a mistake. It will only be retrograde to the army's interest. Instead, if you want to reduce the budgetary allocation on pay and pension and yet also help the corporate sector, amend the short service scheme along the lines you suggested. Is that a correct version of what you're saying? Yes. Reduce the short service to five years. No need for a new scheme. During those five years also, you should have the option of getting a permanent commission so that his motivation level remains high. Don't induct an officer and tell him this is your dead end after three years you are home. What motivation will he have? It's normal human nature. No criticism of the youth. I understand that. Let me now come back to a point that I raised earlier which you didn't answer. Perhaps you didn't hear the question. Politicians say that the three-year tour of duty, taking in young people, keeping them for three years, will build up patriotic zeal in the country. It will build up national spirit. Do you agree or disagree with them? I, I don't know. On one hand, as an army man, I feel proud that the military uniform is uh, uh, synonymous with patriotism. But beyond that, army has to look for practical gains out of the scheme. Patriotism is fine. You, you don't need a new scheme to project that patriotism. We have enough heroes in the army project their photographs at every street bend, every street corner. You don't need to start a scheme only to get that patriotism feeling among the youth. We already have young icons who have done very well. They are gallantry award winners. So you don't need to start a new scheme. In fact, you refer to this in the article you wrote for The Wire. You said, don't use the uniform as a mere billboard for the display of patriotic zeal. Don't use the army as a CV brusher for individuals. Again, that would be misuse of the army. Yes, I have used these words, the due diligence, and I stand by every word that I wrote in the paper on wire. I am absolutely convinced that the scheme will not give any return to the army. It is only giving negative. Now, General Kajan, you've served for decades in the army. You've also been the head of the ex-servicemen's league. You understand and know ex-servicemen. Let me ask you, this is the last question. Are you in this criticism a lone voice? Or do you believe you're reflecting the view of a lot of other retired officers as well? They may not have spoken out, but are you reflecting their views? As far as the retired officers are concerned, Karan, more than 95% have given me the feedback critical of the scheme. Some have only asked for a relook, and not nobody, not a single one has said that the scheme is good. As far as the serving is concerned, I don't think it is right on my part to seek views from the serving on a policy that is currently under examination. That will not be right. It is against the ethics of the army. But as you said, 95% of the retired officers have spoken to you critically of the scheme. Yes, they have. Vast majority. Without reducing it to figures, maybe more than 95. Everyone has said, no, this scheme should not be introduced. Some have said, hey, let us wait for the details to come out. But that is not saying that the scheme is good. So nobody has actually said the scheme is recommended. So then my last question. You're saying to the government, to the army, to all those who are responsible for pushing this idea forward, please don't go ahead with it. The army will lose. There may be gains for the corporate sector, but the army doesn't exist as a recruiting ground for the corporate sector. And there are better ways of reducing the army's allocation in terms of pay and pension, this is the wrong way of making budgetary cuts. Yes, Karan, army is your last resort. It has been doing the country proud. Let it run the way it is. Don't introduce new schemes which actually erode the very operational readiness. Let us not pick at the healthiest tooth all the time.
General Karyam, thank you very much for this interview. Stay well and stay safe. Thank you, Karan. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.